How's it going everyone? It's Sam. We just got the Fed minutes and I want to show what the Fed exactly said, how it's affecting markets. I also want to go through some of the top news from today and I want to give you some of my thoughts and what I'm looking for in crypto and in the stock market moving forward. So we're going to cover a lot. I also have another video that I think will be pretty cool, uh, basically talking about how you're probably ahead of your peers if you're buying crypto and what you should really be looking for, how much crypto do you need to be ahead of other people because you probably are again wealthier in terms of crypto than just about everyone you know on average so be on the lookout for that video hit subscribe if you want to see future videos just like that also there are links underneath the video in case you want to know when i'm buying and selling stocks and crypto there's a link to patreon there's also a link down there to mumu if you deposit any amount uh, i believe you get seven stocks and if you deposit a thousand dollars or more you can get 10 more free stocks also a link down there to Marjex in case you want a long or short crypto. Now, Bitcoin and crypto, they're, it's down over the last 24 hours, down 2.6% uh, over the last day. Obviously, Bitcoin fell under 24,000, which a lot of people were worried about. I see a lot of charts like this going around crypto Twitter showing how bearish this looks. But when you look, we haven't fallen down below this previous mark that we set just a few days ago, around 23,300. We aren't even close to where we were a couple weeks ago, uh, actually a week ago, when we fell down uh, to 22,000 in this 21 to 22,000 range. So I still think we're looking okay. I think it's okay for the RSI to cool off, for the whole crypto market to cool off. And when we zoom out, and don't just look at that, you can see we are still looking quite bullish over the last few weeks. This is good. Now, we have 10-year treasuries moving up throughout the day. Uh, this is the one-year treasury, though, that I wanted to show because it's over 5%. Now, you can maybe understand why some people would want to go with a one-year treasury instead of maybe going into risk assets. This is getting more and more attractive. I mean, even just uh, a couple months ago, back in October, we were sitting around 4%. Now we've moved up a whole percent. Now, we also continue to get changes to what the market expects moving forward. We have uh, priced in more rate hikes. And now, when you go through this, we're not expecting any rate decreases for the entire year. The market was pricing that in earlier. Now, that will continue to shift and if the market starts thinking we're going to have to decrease rates again or we are going to be able to, then that will probably push up risk assets, obviously. So this just ebbs and flows. Now, we just got the Fed minutes and this was, in a lot of people's minds, uh, going to be a non-event. And I kind of think that too. I mean, the markets are doing pretty well afterwards, but this came before or the Fed minutes show what happened before some of the recent CPI and PPI uh, numbers that came out recently. Uh, so we still don't know exactly what the Fed's thinking now because this is a lagging indicator. But they said participants agreed that restrictive monetary policy was required until the Fed was confident that inflation would fall to 2%. They also agreed that the process would likely take some time. And I think this is a positive. What they've really showed over the last couple meetings or a couple speeches when inflation came down quickly was they said, yes, that's what we expected, right? We wanted inflation to fall down quickly. And then when it wasn't coming down as quickly as we thought it should, the Fed said, basically, we realize that sometimes we're going to have months that are a little bit higher than others. So I think it's pretty clear that the Fed is trying to even out the emotions, basically saying on bad months, hey, it's okay. And then when we have really good months where it comes in really low, saying, hey, don't get too excited here. And I think that's pretty much what they've done the entire time, which when we have gotten some bad reports recently, that helps out the market. That makes the market feel a little bit more calm than what we expected. So this didn't give a lot of indication into what the Fed's thinking now, but it pretty much reiterates what they've already said. It also said that most uh, most participants wanted a 25 basis point hike, but a few wanted 50 basis points. So uh, I think that gives the market some indication as well that maybe they were a little bit more dovish than we were expecting at that last meeting. But we'll have to see what the next 
Fed speech uh, comes out like and what they say there. But we do have some CPI and PPI before then. And uh, we do have PPI actually or PCE coming in very soon. Now, I want to cover some crypto related news and then I'll tell you kind of what I'm expecting and what I'm looking for to see uh, over the next month really uh, on crypto and on stocks and what I would want to see. Now, <laughs> there are a couple really interesting stories here. First of all, there is an there was an absence in liquidity on BUSD which caused it to momentarily trade at 20 cents against its DAI trading pair on Binance Wednesday. Now it's back at $1, but I'm glad that I didn't see this. This would have freaked me out seeing uh, BUSD falling down to $0.20. Cents. Just something to pay attention to. I personally would take your money out of BUSD, especially with uh, Paxos not being able to issue anymore. I think it will slowly die. They say that all the crypto is there to back it up, but I don't really think there's much point in still holding it at this point. We also got news that Solana Spaces will close their New York and Miami stores seven months after opening. So if you don't remember this, they opened retail stores and now they basically said they weren't able to onboard enough users. That doesn't really make sense. And they were looking to uh, bring in 100,000 people to Solana per month, but they've only had 75 people actually walking into the store over the seven months. So obviously about a 10x disappointment compared to what they were expecting. But I would kind of expect that anyways in a bear market. If this was during the bull market, I'm sure that they would have a lot more people coming in, a lot more people being interested. We are getting rumors as well that there are more layoffs happening soon in crypto, specifically with Dapper Labs. The latest decision regarding NFTs as securities below may accelerate these rumors. So basically, Dapper Labs controls the NBA Top Shot uh, NFT collection, which is really popular. But now a judge is finding that they actually are securities, which could cause some more fines, could cause more uh, strict regulations, and could cause them to have to pay more money. So uh, like Polygon, they might have to do some, some layoffs here very soon as well. And we also have another crypto that is in a large uh, case with the SEC now that's trending on Twitter, which is Ripple. And there's some interesting news recently. The uh, judge mentioned the SEC's hypocrisy when presenting arguments to the court about Hinman's speech. The judge emphasized that the lawyers of the regulatory agency are more interested in expanding control over the crypto market than wishing to obtain justice. <laughs> That's pretty rough, but I think that is true. The SEC has really been trying to crack down on crypto, take some easy money from exchanges like Kraken that didn't really have the money or uh, the ability to fight back. They also are talking about just uh, banning staking in general. I think that they have been overreaching recently, and I would be very careful if I was the SEC, especially with this ongoing case. This could be a big win for crypto here soon. And with China allowing Hong Kong to start trading crypto here, I believe it's June 1, so a few months away, I'd be careful about overextending yourself and really pushing out too many companies and looking even worse than they already do. So hopefully this ends here soon. Hopefully this XRP case ends because I think it would be a big win for crypto. Uh, and hopefully the SEC calms down a little bit and really tries to work with these crypto companies instead of just outright banning what they're trying to do. Now, speaking of a company that is willing to fight against the SEC, Coinbase has said that they're willing to fight recently to keep their staking on their platform. Now, they just announced earnings. Their loss was better than expected. It was uh, $2.46, and they were expecting $2.55, a loss. And they had $629 million versus the $590 million in revenue expected. They say subscription and uh, subscription and service revenue helped offset a quarter over quarter decline in trading volumes. Now, when you look at their actual earnings report, I think this is a little bit misleading. It's a subscription and service revenue. And the one part of their business that grew from last quarter, because all the other ones are down, I mean, consumer trading revenue is down pretty significantly. We're talking about about 10%. Institutional revenue is down 20 or 30 percent. Blockchain rewards are down. Custodial fees are down. 
the uh, other subscription and services revenue is down 20%. The only bit of this uh, report that actually shows an increase in revenue is interest income. When you break that down too, that's just the amount of cash that they're or the amount of money that they're getting from cash, whether it's holding USDC for clients or their own cash. They have about $5.5 billion, I believe it was, in cash between those two different asset buckets. And when you look at their interest income, $182 million, that's about 3%, a little bit over 3%, which would make sense. I mean, they're probably just putting this into treasuries. They have some for liquidity, and they're getting more interest. So this isn't even anything growing in their business. So I'd be a little bit careful if you're investing to Coinbase. I believe Coinbase is down around 10% here today. But uh, their their report doesn't come uh, inspiring a lot of strength to me, or it doesn't show me a lot of strength or a lot of resiliency in this bear market. But that's what I would expect, right? People are buying less and less. We just started to get a rally as well. So I would expect the next quarter to be better. But Coinbase isn't my favorite play on crypto. I'd rather buy crypto in its pure form or something like MicroStrategy even uh, compared to buying Coinbase. We've got news of the Reddit co-founder buying back uh, pre-sale. He bought Ethereum. So he bought 50,000 Ether for just $15,000, buying it for 30 cents per coin. So he's made $85 million on Ethereum. And I believe they're still holding, uh, the person's still holding. So uh, this just shows you how much you can make in crypto if you are in the right narratives. And I think a lot of crypto still have a lot further to run over the coming years. But this was kind of interesting just to take a look at how much money someone can make off of a $15,000 investment. And last thing I want to say, if before we get into what I'm looking for, if you're still in the market, congrats, because Robinhood's daily average revenue trades is going down significantly going from 4 million down to about 1.3 million cutting down 66 percent over the last two years so a lot of people have left the stock market a lot of people have left crypto but i think this is a really good time to be buying and looking long term because this is the worst drawdown over the last couple months that we've seen in years for crypto and in a very long time for the equities market This is, uh, with the exception of COVID, this is one of the few major drawdowns we've seen over the last 10, 15 years in equities. So I think that this has been a pretty good time to pick up names that you think will do well over the long term. Now, I do want to hit on a few different different things that I'm going to be looking for over the coming weeks. So I really want to see con- uh, continuous CPI prints coming in lower and lower. Now, that's what everyone wants, but I want to see the trend come down. You know, analysts give their expectations. I would love to see us hit or exceed expectations on the downside, continue to come in lower than analysts expect. But even if we don't look at that, I just want to see inflation continue to come down. I think we do have some metrics that are going to be lagging, like housing. So, that will continue to come in lower, hopefully, and continue to push up the market. I also want to see PCE coming down this week. We have that later this week. Hopefully, that comes in pretty strong. Uh, we hopefully won't, you know, surprise to the upside there. But I wouldn't be surprised. I do want to continue to see, though, lower numbers overall. That's really what's key, I think, in this market. PPI was a leading indicator that we got. Uh, just last week, I believe, and it's still up significantly. It went up to 0.7% month over month, still coming in lower than it was the month before. But I want to see PPI continue to come down as well because it's a leading indicator. Of course, that's what everyone wants to see. And I'm probably reiterating some uh, things that you've heard all around the internet and YouTube there. But I think it is really important that those numbers continue to come in because I think that's the major indicator for the market right now. Where do those come in? That's going to drive how quickly the Fed U-turns. Now, I also would like to see the labor market softening a bit. I realize that that might seem a little bit insensitive to people that might lose their jobs, but that would help the markets. That would help stocks and cryptos if we started to get uh, less of a tight labor market or a looser labor market. I think that would definitely push up the equities market. 
We are probably going to see more layoffs as well from major tech companies. I mean, we we're already talking about a couple different crypto companies that will do some layoffs and have been doing layoffs. But the overall market is still really strong, again, for jobs. So I, I think we're, we're going to have to see some more layoffs from major tech companies. Apparently, Facebook may be uh, having another round of layoffs, which I think whenever a company like this, a major tech company announces that, I think it actually will help them in the short term. I think they'll bump up on this news. I would also like to see some housing market data continue to soften. We've seen less and less house sales, but the prices haven't come down as substantially as a lot of people think. So that would be nice to see as well, just seeing that affordability come down. Personally, I would love it too, because I'd love to buy another property uh, for rental. Then with spe with specificity to crypto, specific to Bitcoin, I would really like to see us hold around this level at 23,300. I think that would be really positive. We're already bouncing a little bit here, as you can see. If we can't hold this, if we start breaking down, this is the next level around 22,300. We saw some resistance here just uh, about a, you know a week ago. If we break down below there, I think 21,300 is our next stop and then 20,000 after that. Really, as long as we stay above, really, I think if we stay above this level, 21,300, I think the bulls are still in charge. I think uh, we, we could still move up pretty quickly up to 28,000, 30,000. And I would not be surprised if that happens, especially if we get some good data coming in uh, from the economy or some bad data, depending on uh, you know what metric we're looking at. So let me know your thoughts on all this underneath the video. What do you think about this? Be on the lookout for what will be coming in the next day. I will be posting a video on you know where you stack up versus the average person in terms of Bitcoin accumulation. So be on the lookout for that video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.